Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. And keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, in this ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to give some basic informations for yourself to develop a very clear spiritual foundation with practicing meditation. So when it comes to meditation, it has many meanings. But according to the, the Pali Buddhism, why it's called Pali Buddhism? Because in according to the Theravada tradition, that all the, the sutras in Pali and that explanations is little bit different than ordinary meaning of the words. So when it comes to the, the meaning of meditation, in the Pali it's called bhavana, it's kind of like a cultivation of the mind or the development of the mind with the profitable skills, not with improfitable way. Because development can happen in many ways. So here, the bhavana means then you develop your profitable skills with the effort. So it is not by the power of something or not by the third person or not by any other outside interference. Your, within your own inner consciousness, within your own decision, within your own effort, you develop your own mind towards profitable skills. So then when it comes to that profitable skills, may I, there are many profitable skills when it comes to our conventional world. And also in, when it comes to the meditation, there are many skills that you can develop you need as tools to apply for your practice. But when it comes to this all, the most highest profitable skill as a human being, you have to develop your awareness. So awareness deeply connected to all other things. The awareness is kind of like a foundation for the for the development of the mind. There are many other things can happen in the outside world, in the material world, without any awareness. But if you want to develop your mind with the profitable skills, that is what necessary. And other thing is, when you go towards the liberation or the Nibbana, the panya or the wisdom is the key point. 
not even the merits not even the all the material luxurious comfortable environment the wisdom for the wisdom directly connect the connect your awareness so when your awareness becomes sharp and clear as a result of that you can gain the wisdom so that's how it link but the thing is when it come to this mental mental practice most of time very easily we can go into wrong way so go when we fall into the wrong way it will develop the wrong view once the person hold the wrong view as right then there is no end and it is very difficult to take a u turn it is very difficult to to find another way so that's why again and again again and again you it is your responsibility to know about this so get out of the wrong view one way is practicing the right view that is what most of time we know there is another way to get out of the wrong view so as example just imagine playing a game soccer game or any game there are rules that you should not break even though you get marks still there are some rules that you can't break just imagine then there is a good player like a soccer player basketball player very good player but he don't know if he, if he don't know about the rules that he should follow even though he play good sometimes by mistake maybe he can break rules so if he break rules maybe he go out of the game so like that hmm? even though you have the awareness even though you have the effort even though you have the energy sometimes with this spiritual practice we can fall into wrong views so if you don't know what are the wrong views it's kind of like you you become a good player but you break the rules you can't you can't win this game so basically the all the rules related to meditation go towards the the wisdom protect the wisdom and not to fall into ignorance so what is the ignorance here means misunderstanding right things we take as wrong wrong things we take as right impermanent things we take as permanent unsatisfactory things we take as satisfaction the biggest out of this all the most biggest and the strongest wrong view is taking the selflessness as self so then when it come to meditation most of the time people attain into the tranquility state or maybe people attain to high mental powers or maybe people gain some kind of psychic powers and deeply they feel kind of like a detached from all the the disturb and the, they deeply tranquilize the the body and mind 
maybe that take them to think this me or oh, i am i am the one who gaining this oh i can do this oh i achieve to something so like that out of that the spiritual practice they develop the wrong view this selflessness as self that is one of the dangerous thing that can happen to all of us and it until we attain to the nibbana that challenge always going to be there so that's why again and again again and again you have to have the power to develop your introspection and see the impermanence unsatisfactory nature see the change that happen within the experience and the experiencer perception and the perceiver and at the same time no this all related to the cause and effect without having unchangeable permanent solid concrete self so that doesn't mean this everything just happen itself no because according to the buddha's teaching there is a self otherwise why we need to practice this otherwise who is experiencing this otherwise how i become different than you of course there is a self so that's why we need to to practice and need to attain to the liberation otherwise we no need to do this so but what is the the misunderstanding here even though we have a self there is no solid permanent unchangeable self that whatever the self we experience it changeable not permanent so then within your eye ear nose tongue body mind whatever whatever you perceive of course there is something but it is not permanent so whatever the outside object is not permanent and the whatever i consciousness a consciousness knows consciousness tongue consciousness body consciousness not permanent but there is experience happens problem is here we take that experience as permanent be very clear and develop the self i am i am it's look like the same person experience this all but that whatever the mind or the consciousness change moment by moment moment by moment so the deeply this all related to each and everything from each and every angle related to cause and effect so as you know black and white if you if you reduce the colors to to the the bottom we get the black and white that at the same time if you look very carefully if you know how the mechanism of the colors there are certain colors according to my memory there are three colors you if you mix that three colors you can get the white and there are three colors if you mix that three colors you can get the black then just imagine see so you, even though we experience that everything related to black and white still inside that black there are three colors so you can get 
you can get because the black is not even though we talk about the black holes and the total darkness still that also come as a result of some kind of colors or the light and even that the white is even though it's a complete purity it itself not it is mixed with something so like that always you have to remember there is nothing in this material world, physical world, in this mental world, there is nothing exists independently, separately. Of course, things exist. We can't tell there is no existence. No, things exist. That's why we know after we die, we are going to born. It, it may not going to happen 100% or we can't say it's going to happen 100% or not. But still, we know. So that's why we keep practice. That's why we're trying to get out of this sansara and attend to Nibbana. If we, if everything going to end out of the, after this life, then why, why we have to find the liberation or the Nibbana? But it is not a kind of like an independent event. So this always things happen. That's another thing is good thing. That's why you can at, you can get out of this. You can change things because once you understand the cause and effect, once you understand the mechanism, you can change the definition. That's why it's say, once you know all the rules, you can play the game without breaking and win the game. And at the same time, like when it comes to language, and uh, when it comes to law, music, Dancing, playing, singing, this all the, the skills that we develop. And if you know the rules properly, you can break it. How about that? So if you know the rules properly, you can break it like music like literature, like the law. If you know the law very well, you know how to break it. Most of the people do little things and go to court and go to jail because they don't know about the law. See, then yourself, if you know the wrong views, Remember, just sometimes not enough knowingly only the right views. If you know what is what are the wrong views and you are capable to stay out of it. The beauty of the Buddha, Buddha is, is not that only focus to the right views. Buddha never knew only the right view. Buddha knew all the wrong views. So then always remember yourself. So whatever, in the, even in the conventional level, we say good or bad, right or wrong, just even basically know about it. That will help you to stay on the right path. If you know what is the wrong path, it will keep you to the right path. So that's why don't don't resist things. That doesn't mean you have to do wrong things. No, no, you no need to do it, but you can know it. Doing something and knowing something is two different ways. In conventionally, knowing things is very necessary. 
So then when it go to the Vipassana level, today I want to mention, I want to bring something that a lot of people don't focus to that. So as you know, the foundation according to the this uh, Vishuddhi Magga, there is a book called Vishuddhi Magga, is categorize all the Buddha's teaching from bottom to the end. How to develop your moral discipline and a spiritual practice and uh, tranquility state and the wisdom. So there, when it comes to wisdom, there are three different skills that you have to develop. Shruta me jnana, chinta me jnana, bhavana me jnana. So basically we think the Shruta me jnana, we talk about uh, Shruta me jnana means gaining knowledge. Opening to the knowledge. Listening to others. Having open mind and welcome everything around us. Chinta me jnana, developing the the mind thinking, bhavana mayan, focusing and practicing, developing tranquility state and meditating and observe things. Each and every angle develop this critical analytical understanding or observation. But here we go a little bit more deeper Especially when it comes to meditation, always remember. Shrutame jnana here, even though generally we talk about gaining knowledge. How many things that you have to learn in this life? And what is the point learning this or everything around us? So then Shrutame jnana, you have to divert towards the vipassana knowledge. So then Shruttame Jnana here means always remember learn about vipassana meditation, tranquility meditation, samatha vipassana, learn about it, read about it, listen about it. So you, you put effort to know about it. Tranquility meditation and vipassana. So even when it comes to the tranquility meditation, there are many other meditations. You, you withdraw from that. You learn specially this vip, some tranquility and vipassana. So then when it comes to the vipassana even, then most of people think kind of like a, without moving, you stay one hour every day, morning one hour, evening one hour, that is vipassana. That is not vipassana. That is a one meditation technique. So the vipassana deeply means you recognize the, this impermanence, unsatisfactory nature, selflessness, within form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition. And without developing any format, you get out of all the patterns, structure, you get out of all the point of views and start to see things as it is. And from there you recognize how things come to be as they are. So then, that's why even when it comes to the Vipassana, you, you learn about it, read about it, go to the sutras and try to understand it a little bit. Now more than any other time, we have so many facilities. And one of the good things around us today, even though that exactly not accurate, and you can get a lot of benefit out of this chat GPT. Sometimes it doesn't give exactly right answer, but still you can find there are a lot of things you can learn. That's a new knowledge. So you have to use it to practice meditation. Know about meditation. Not to know about everything. It's, it is in endless. 
So that's why within this limited time, try to use all those, the facilities, the skills to develop your tranquility state and develop your vipassana knowledge. Shrutamenyan. Shrutamenyan then here, when it comes to that, generally even though we talk about learning, opening mind, here you have to remember, learn about vipassana. Open to vipassana. And the chinta menyan. So then you contemplate on it. So it is not about that everything that, that what happened around the world, you think about it. No, then what is the difference in between practitioner and ordinary person? Because that is what we do every day. In the sansara, that is what we used to do. But here, chinta me jnana means, so you have to think about, more deeply investigate, little bit go deeper and look what is this meditation? How it related to this soul? What is Vipassana? Try to understand it very clearly. And cause and effect, dependent origination, eightfold path. So basically know about this de in details and then reflect on it. So that's also kind of become kind of like a meditation. And then, so that is what chinta menyana here. Not about just thinking about ordinary thing. And the bhavana menyana here, it's not about just doing any kind of meditation. No, you practice this. Vipassana, go foundation. And there you develop the awareness and experience this. And deeply go into the depth of your form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition. This five aggregates and understand in permanence unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. That is Bhavana Amina. And then about the world and you recognize that all these material things, all this object impermanent, unsatisfactory nature is there and selfless. That selflessness nature is there. So both way you recognize this. So then remember that is how your practice become more and more and more sharp, clear. Of course, in conventional world, we we our life engage with many things. So by the time, little by little, little by little, you detach things. And then there is a time come for you to concentrate, focus, practice tranquility meditation and vipassana meditation. So tranquilizing the mind, you go to the vipassana level. And maybe by the time directly you can go to the vipassana level. And then by the time your mind come to a level even without going step by step, step by step, directly, you can access to this through nature that's happening around us. So it takes only one second to, to come to that point once you have practice. So in that level, when with that contemplation, if you, just imagine when you're ready to die, your mind focused to that. In that last breath, if you can go 
from this world there is no another place going to to belong to you otherwise most of time what happened we always focusing and missing and thinking about what we miss and when we get old we start to bring all our historical memory our history and we talk about it and we live with it and little by little little by little when we become weaker we start to dream about this world again to repeat with that mind when you die you going to come back see that the mind develop it already before you die you you start to to develop how to enjoy life from the beginning but once you develop this sutame jnana chintame jnana bhavana manyana towards the vipassana without generating any kind of future things you can contemplate on this ultimate truth impermanent unsatisfactory nature selflessness so with that let's get into practice a little bit now so your right palm on your left and neck get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture so bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say so patweva oh may i be well and happy three times take a moment and think we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique all the buddhas all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom so we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting may my body become more comfortable may my breath be more smooth may no difficulties come to me may all the success come to me also think for a moment this is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation and deeply observe the change happens moment by moment do nothing extra so in the beginning deeply and gently breathe in breathe out three times please and find the sensation and allow your inhalation exhalation to happen as it is bring your attention to your body please observe your posture we cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound village city state country world around this universe also as far as you can through galaxies other planets or stars reminding yourself like this with clear intention mentally repeat after me may all living beings in this universe be well and happy may everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy 
may all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. Your backside. Your left side. Your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam gabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya. 
सबे भूतानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्ता अनुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया मायदम्मानुदम्म पटिपत्तिया बुद्धम् पूजे मि दम्मं पूजे मि संगं पूजे मि अत्ताय इमाय पटिपत्तिया जाति जराव्या दिमरनम् हा परिबुंदिसामि इदम् मे पुण्य कमंगा सबक आवाहन हो तू सब दुःखा पमुंचतू ब्लेस यू